Okay, so let's think about this example. Let's say that you're interested again in the political domain. And what you're interested in trying to determine is whether or not certain demographic characteristics are useful in predicting people's voting behavior. So you go to a polling location on election day and you conduct an exit poll. And when somebody walks out of the polling place, you ask them if they have uh, a stated party affiliation, so whether or not they're registered as a Democrat or an Independent or a Republican or another party. So we'll just call that an other catch-all category for now. Okay. And then you also want to know other things. So you ask them uh, if they don't mind stating what their annual income is. Okay. And then you want to find out who the candidate is that they voted for. So you ask them, um, let's say in a presidential election, who they voted for for president, and then you want to know their confidence that they made the right decision in that vote. So these are some questions that you ask them, among others, when they walk out of the polling location. So in this context, we can identify some very specific variables. We can also think about whether these are discrete or continuous types of variables and the role that they play in the context of this research design. So I'll give you a minute to think about what are maybe four different variables that came up. And if you need to rewind a little bit to, uh, to review the study, then you can do that as well. Okay, so the first variable that we can think of is political party. We asked people whether or not they're Democrat, Independent, or Republican, or a member of some other party. We also asked people what is their income? Let's say that we're asking this in terms of their annual income. We then wanted to know what candidate that they selected. That is, for whom did they vote in the presidential contest? And finally we asked them what is their confidence that they made the right decision? So we may want to know, for example, whether people with higher incomes are more confident in the decisions that they've made. We might want to know the proportion of people in different political parties that voted for each candidate, especially the independent and other categories, perhaps, and so forth and so on. But for now, what we're interested in is how we categorize these different variables. So political party. First of all, would this be a continuous variable or would it be a discrete variable? And then secondly, in the context of this research study, is this an independent variable or a dependent variable? In this case, political party would be a discrete independent variable. It can only take on, in our case, one of four different values. Discrete, or Democrat, Independent, Republican, or other. So there's only four specific values it can take on. Someone can't be independent but leaning Republican. In this case, we didn't give them that option. So it's not something that can be measured on a continuous political spectrum from perhaps very, very liberal to very, very conservative. Secondly, it's an independent variable. We're interested in whether or not political party is able to predict the candidate that they ultimately select. In this case, we want to know whether or not political party has an effect on another variable. That is, it's an independent variable. Secondly, we asked about annual income, which was another independent variable in the context of this study. But annual income can be measured continuously. That is, if we wanted to, we could measure down to the penny how much somebody's annual income is. Now, even though technically that's going to provide us with a finite number of different values, okay, there are so many values on this scale that, for all intents and purposes, this would be considered a continuous scale. Okay, because we can measure right down to the penny, there are going to be hundreds of thousands of different values that this could take on. In fact, millions or more different values that this could take on, which is enough to consider this a continuous variable for all intents and purposes. Okay. The point here being that there's not just a few different specific values that it can take on. Now, if we ask annual income within certain ranges, so if we only give people, say, five different options, that their income is below 50,000, from 50 to 60, 60 to 70, 70 to 80, 80 to 100, and greater than 100, or something like that. And now we've given people specific options, and that would turn this into a discrete independent variable. 
Okay, so whether a variable is discrete or continuous, and in fact whether it's an independent or dependent variable, is always going to depend on the context of the specific research study that we're talking about. Now in this case, if you hadn't figured it out by now, the candidate that they select is going to be our dependent variable. This is the outcome, the behavior in which we're interested. We're wondering whether or not our independent variables, in this case political party and annual income, have an effect on the dependent variable, the candidate that we ultimately select. Okay? And even if there are quite a few candidates, this is going to be a discrete dependent variable where there are only going to be a specific number of candidates. Finally, let's think about the rating of confidence. Again, this is going to depend on how we ask it. If we ask people to rate on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being not very confident, 10 being highly, highly confident in whether or not they've made the right selection in their vote for president, then this would be a discrete dependent variable. Now again, we could measure confidence in some other way that's going to allow it to take on a lot of different values and be potentially almost continuous. But the way I phrased it here on a scale of 1 to 10, okay, this is only presenting people with 10 different values with which they can respond. And even though we might calculate an average confidence rating that might go down to 4 or 5 decimal places, each individual person is providing only one of ten specific values, which makes this a discrete dependent variable. Now hopefully that made some sense, because now it's time for you guys to think about some other examples. In particular, for the following research study, I want you guys to write down all of the different variables that you hear. Also, I want you to write down whether or not it's a discrete or continuous variable, as well as whether it's an independent or dependent variable in the context of this study. Now, listen carefully, because in this case, the answers aren't going to be provided. These are, in fact, going to be the responses to five of the quiz questions that are associated with this lecture. So, you want to conduct a study that wants to understand the effects of alcohol. So what you do is you collect a sample of young adults and you put them in a driving simulator. And then what you do is you vary the amount of alcohol that different people have in the driving simulator. What you're interested in is in the driving simulator you present them with a 10 minute video clip and what they have to do is to respond to certain situations that come up in the video clip you're interested in the number of errors that they make in these different situations. That is, for example, failing to swerve out of the way when they otherwise should, or failing to stop at a stop sign. So you're interested in the number of errors that they make. Okay, if you guys recall from high school driving simulators, the number of times the little yellow or red light might have come on on your driving simulator. And you're also interested all, in particular in how it affects their reaction time. So there's a crucial element that you have in your driving simulation scene where at one point a kid's basketball rolls out into the street and he starts to run out and chase it. Of course the correct action here is to slam on the brakes, but you're interested in from the moment that the kid starts to approach the street, so the moment that that part of the clip start, starts, until the moment when the person hits the brakes. That's the reaction time that you're going to record and that's the reaction time in which you're interested as well. Okay. So the people that you bring into this are naturally going to vary on a lot of characteristics. In particular, you're interested in whether alcohol has differential effects on men versus women, as well as if it has different effects on people of different ages, ranging in your study from, say, 18 to 35. Now I'm going to take a moment to pause here, and again you can rewind and replay my description of this research study if you need to. And again, what I want you to do is to write down all of the variables that you have identified. Once you've done that, then you can continue and move on with the rest of the lecture. Okay, well I'm going to help you out and we're going to go over five key variables that I've identified in this research study. You still have to determine whether they're continuous and discrete, and whether they're independent or dependent variables. Okay, but let's go over the variables that I mentioned. Okay, at the end I mentioned that there's a couple key qualities in which you're interested and if they 
interact with alcohol consumption in determining people's performance in the driving simulator. In particular, we mentioned gender and age as two key variables in which you're interested. Gender, of course, being male or female, and age ranging, uh, in this case, people from 18 to 35. And the other thing that I mentioned is before you put people in the driving simulators, that you had them consume different amounts of alcohol. That is alcohol consumption. Finally, what you recorded was a key scene in terms of how quickly they slammed on the brakes. That is, you measured their reaction time. The other thing that you measured in the driving simulator itself was the number of errors that the people made across the entire scene. So these are the five key variables in which you're interested in this study. Think carefully about how each of these variables exists and how they exist in the context of the study and try to identify again whether they are measured as continuous or discrete variables and whether they are independent or dependent variables in this research context. Okay, so take a minute to write those down. You're going to need those when you, again when you submit and complete the online quiz associated with this lecture.